Now everybody, imagine a supersonic airliner that's bigger and faster than the Concorde. Instead of taking three hours to cross the Atlantic, it would only take two hours to cross the Atlantic. Now imagine that this plane also doesn't exist. Everybody, welcome aboard the Boeing 2707. Maybe the name is too long and that's why the plane failed. Everybody, I was so excited to make this video because finally we have a flight simulator add-on that lets us experience the big plans that Boeing had in the 60s and 70s. You know, in 1962, when the Concorde was announced by the British and the French, the Americans really were a little bit worried. It was suggested that if they did not immediately start their own SST, so their supersonic transporter, the US would lose 50,000 jobs, 4 billion in income, and $3 billion in capital because they thought supersonic flying is the future, which it turned out not to be. And that's why the US spent a billion dollars in development, which by the way is $7 billion today, on this very airplane, which has just come out as a freeware for the X-Plane Flight Simulator by Da Vinci. Da which lets us have a close look at this plane, which was America's answer to the Concorde. But instead of breaking the sound barrier, it um, broke the budget. Anyway, have a look at this cockpit, which does remind me a lot of the Concorde. What I find super funny is actually the uh, yoke controls, which I've never seen before. I think this was generally what Boeing planned to be, the flight controls. I have, I mean, it looks... Looks quite funky. Anyway, the rest of the Concorde really does remind us of the Concorde a little bit. It has a bit of glass elements, which is, I guess, a little bit more modern. Here's the overhead panel, which is a lot more clean than the Concorde. And here we have the engineering panel, which is also a lot cleaner than the Concorde. Concorde really was quite a tough airplane to fly. Let's have a look into the cabin, which is a lot bigger than the Concorde. I mean, the Concorde, we've visited a ton of times. Oh, uh... There's a awesome vegan food truck that's just crashed into the Boeing. Anyway, you know, the Concorde was very small. It could only fit around 100 people. It being so small might just be one of the reasons why it failed, you know, to be very economical. Look, we even have a three-row seat configuration. Now, of course, this add-on isn't state-of-the-art. It's free after all. But we can have a little bit of a look at how many people this could carry. Now, we even have a sophisticated iPad right here. Good. Either way, let's have a little bit of an attempt of turning this plane on. Uh, I guess here, normal amps. Okay, that turns on something. Galleys, does that... I'm struggling to even, well, interact with this airplane. That does something. This is very basic simulation of a plane that we don't even know how it was supposed to work. You know what I mean? This is all just a concept plane, really. Turn this on. I don't know. Boost pump should help, allegedly. Uh, here are the, I guess, engine switches. Put those to ridge. You know what? I give up. I don't know how this airplane works. It obviously does not have an APU, just like the Concorde does. So I think it, you know, starts with ground air. So let's just, I don't know, turn it on like this. Very professional. Good. As you can see, these engines are turning on. Now, these are obviously far bigger than the Olympus engines. The Boeing 2707 was supposed to use the General Electric ZE4 engines. With the afterburners on, it was supposed to deliver 290 kilonewtons of thrust. While the Concorde only delivered a maximum thrust of 169 kilonewtons. Which makes sense. This plane's a lot bigger. In fact, here's a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. Yes, indeed. More capacity and more speed. This plane could fly at Mach 3. Anyway, Anyway, all is well. The engines are now started up. Um, now it does have reverse thrust. We're just going to reverse thrust out of here. Um, yes, yeah, see the strength and power of the Boeing 2707. Now, this airplane very much reminds us of the Concorde indeed. I mean, it also has this delta wing and it has a snoot root that we need to put out, especially for takeoff and landing so that we can actually see the runway. You know, that makes sense. Look at this animation. Works well too. Now we can finally see outside. Something else Boeing planned was to add some sort of a swing wing design to this airplane, like in a fighter jet, where the wing sweep would be variable. And so you could probably, you know, put out the wing for landing and takeoff, you know, for better maneuverability at slow speeds or at all being able to fly at slow speeds. You know, the Concorde had to land at 180 knots at least at a very fast speed. But the problem with such a configuration, especially that has to be as sturdy as this to carry this big airliner, was weight. Yes, instead of bettering the aerodynamics, the wings would have swung the airplane into being pretty much too heavy to operate properly. The, this add-on right here does not have the swing wing idea. So it just has this basic delta wing, which stays the same. But something it has apparently is flaps. Yeah. Concorde didn't have flaps. I guess this would make the airplane more operable at shorter runways as well. So come on, let's go ahead and take off. 
What I find super interesting, and you might wonder about that, is how the fuselage is shaped. Whereas the Concorde has a smooth body that stays the same shape, really, we can see that the fuselage is bigger in front and then gets a little bit narrower and then especially kind of goofily goes like high. And this was definitely made to prevent tail strikes from happening. I mean, the Concorde had the tail landing gear because it will always be tail striking. I guess it doesn't happen here a lot. Let me see if we can take off. Now for that, we shall turn on the afterburners, which we can do right here. Come on now, full power in the Boeing 2707. Oh yeah, we can see afterburners coming on. That's a lot of power. I don't want to imagine how loud this airplane would have been. Oh, wow, that's some quick acceleration as well. Look at the fastest accelerating airliner in the world. Yes. Full power indeed, and we're able to rotate at 140 knots easily. But this plane flies a lot nicer now than the Concorde, doesn't it? All right, so flaps up and also landing gear up. We have a bit of a sturdier landing gear than the Concorde had. Obviously, this plane would have been a little bit bigger. So we have a three landing gear configuration. Put that up. Very interesting animation. Just comes up into the wing now that obviously also makes the airplane too heavy yes look at that okay good and oh oh that might have that might have happened there now please just ignore that uh, little death we just experienced see this airplane has a lot of power almost too much power all right there. <laughs> look at that even without flash we're able to take off put that landing gear up i really want to see how fast can we fly now look at that acceleration that's absolutely insane no wonder this airplane could easily fly at mach 3 look at that afterburners are definitely not even needed for takeoff a very potent airplane god damn it all right now come on let's maybe turn on the autopilot see if it works yeah we're now climbing to 53,000 feet something like that which is definitely an altitude where a supersonic airplane like this feels most comfortable. We have very little oxygen up, up there, so very li little friction. Yes. Now, I'm kind of struggling here with the autopilot. I can't make it climb, but we are very fast right now. We're definitely already fast on the speed of sound. We're already at Mach 1, although our instruments isn't telling us that. According to that, we're having a what ground speed of 128 knots. That's not possible. Maybe we could go faster if I um, didn't forget to put the flaps up. Uh, that's a problem the Concorde wouldn't have had. Uh, there you go. Flaps up now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe that's why we're so low on performance. Uh-huh. And now slowly we're able to move up in speed. There you go. 2.7 Mach. And, um, we're so fast that the flight simulator doesn't even load up. Look. Oh, look. 3.2 Mach now. We are genuinely fast now. Oh, look at that. I think I've broken the flight simulator. We're now at Mach 8. Okay, maybe this model isn't uh, too great in terms of uh, cruise performance. I don't know what the autopilot is doing now. Maybe we're going over speed and the airplane tries to... Uh, oh, God, I've broken the... We're right now at 90,000 feet. We're going to reach space in a in this airplane, which is great. <laughs> not bad, not bad. 120,000 feet. We can see the stars. No, okay, yeah, this is just a freeware model. But yeah, this plane would have been a lot faster. But we already kind of have been able to figure out why it didn't end up being a real thing the government decided to scrap the program in the early 1970s already because it very quickly became clear this airplane would never be able to make money for the airlines you know with the rising fuel prices and this thing used a lot of millions of fuel look on this flight alone we've already used 36,000 pounds of fuel per second this plane eats like 10 kilograms of fuel absolutely insane yeah it's kind of hard to make a big plane that's able to actually fly at supersonic speed and the government quickly realized that as well and then in public people didn't even appreciate this idea because we all know the big problem about flying supersonic is the sonic boom <laughs> you know the concord was famously restricted to flying above oceans and not above land supersonic because it was just so loud when it reached cruise out and cruise speed environmental concerns here in the wikipedia page is quite funny of this boeing during test in 1964 with the xb70 near oklahoma city the path had a maximum width of 16 miles but still resulted in almost 10,000 complaints of damage to buildings <laughs> twelve thousand dollars from mostly for broken glass and cracked plaster by the way that is in 1964 the oklahoma city sonic boom test so the american public was like nah we don't need that which by the airplane never came to life i mean we have it in here in the flight simulator let me see if i can land this and that should be fairly easy okay come on don't die don't die don't die don't die i mean we can put the flaps out like this all is fine landing gear is out airplane is absolutely ready flaps are at 30 degrees slats are even out we even have slats 
despite that, we still need quite a bit of airspeed. 170 knots is probably appropriate. Let's make a smooth landing on this one. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, okay. All right, we maybe do need a little bit of airspeed. Sorry, I was wrong there. Let's go ahead and use the reverse thrust right here. We're just able to stop the airplane in no time whatsoever. So that's worked relatively well. Sorry about the landing gear. Can sometimes I'm sorry. I mean, that was rather a, a nose strike than a tail strike. I, I pulled up all the way. Plane just would fall down like a rock. Yeah, I mean, okay. This is not a super good add-on just yet. The fact that it's able to fly at Mach 8 for some reason. I don't know why. But I very much appreciate now having somewhat of the opportunity to finally fly this beautiful airliner. What a shame we rely on money to do things like this. I'm just hoping that supersonic flying at all comes back. Maybe with the company Boom, which is a great name for a company that makes airplanes. But the Boom Overture will be even, I think, smaller than the Concorde and a little bit slower. I don't think we will ever see a supersonic airplane this big in real life, though. So I thank you guys so much for watching this very heavy and fuel-eating video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.